Hey, what's going on guys? So this is the uh, update uh, or you know better look at this uh, Olight Warrior Mini. If you saw my last video, I did a test outside. I had uh, wrapped a piece of denim around the, uh, the top of the flashlight, turned it on, and uh, pretty quickly it started to uh, burn through this, uh, this piece of denim. Okay, and obviously it clean burned through it after about a minute or so. So, uh, you know, I posted the video, I read some comments and stuff, and uh, I wanted to make this update video. Now, keep in mind, before I went outside and did this test with the denim on top of the flashlight, I did normal testing, and the flashlight worked perfectly fine under normal testing. When uh, holding the flashlight on, uh, even in its highest mode, it didn't get hot. The body didn't get hot, the head didn't get particularly hot that I noticed. It was only very hot when I had the flashlight right on my hand, okay? And uh, it's not the first flashlight I've had that gets hot. It's a very powerful flashlight. 1500 lumens and a tiny little light is very powerful. So first I want to take a look at this head. So there's the, uh, the damage. You can see there is some blackening. All right, I'm not entirely sure if that is the plastic lens itself or if that is denim material that burnt to it. But you can see there's a lot of bubbling on the inside of the lens. All right, and it's just, it's just destroyed. Okay, so what happened was when the denim was close to the head of the light, all the extra heat that was emitting out was trapped. Okay, once the heat got trapped, it very quickly overheated, uh, started to melt the plastic here, as well as obviously, as you can see, burn through the piece of denim, right? The light is still functional. All right, let's go back together here. Right, you can see that the light still turns on fine, even though we have a, a really jacked up lens, it still works, okay? Um, so I read the comments on the first video, right? Now a couple things I want to address. One comment that I got from a couple different people was, well that's dumb, who leaves their flashlight on for like 12 hours? Well you clearly didn't watch the entire video, uh, leaving the flashlight on for long durations of time had nothing to do whatsoever with this test of the heat on the head. Okay, the light functions fine. It can stay on the entire battery cycle. It'll literally stay on and not cause any kind of problems whatsoever until the battery dies. Okay, that's just openly using the light. I just, I had it outside upright. I had it inside upright. I literally walked around with it around the house twice um, and there was no problem there. I didn't feel the heat on the body of the light. It was just functional. It was working fine. So that's the first thing is that it doesn't burn things after being on for 12 hours, okay? If you watch the, uh, the test video that I did, it burned this material instantly. Like, I turned it on, I'm not gonna do it inside, but I turned it on, one, two, three, four, five seconds later, it was smoking, okay? And like I said, within a minute, burned clean through. So this test was supposed to replicate the light being inside your pocket, okay? Now, another comment that I got that, uh, I mean, people kind of took this two different ways. They either looked at this and said, oh my God. And pe sometimes people get extreme reactions to things, right? And it's wrong to be extreme on either end, all right? So some people saw the video and they said, oh my God, I am never buying an Olight ever again. That's not what you should have taken away from that video. Also, the people who are on the opposite end of the spectrum and extreme says, well, you're dumb, okay? Obviously, powerful flashlights burn things. That's just what they do. That's not true either, <laughs> okay? I have... Uh, plenty of flashlights, Olight, as well as other brands that are putting out more power than this, and they do not do that same thing. They do not instantly burn material, okay, when the head's covered. So this is uh, clearly, it's an issue with this particular light, okay, and hold on, I know you're, you're ready to comment. It's an issue with this particular light because the, uh, it's a combination of things. The heat sink is not very well, okay. In flashlights, there's heat sinks. that They're supposed to absorb that extra heat. That's literally their job. And especially with higher power flashlights, it's important to have a proper heat sink in here. Also, the, uh, the lens is plastic. If you had a glass lens, maybe this wouldn't be an issue whatsoever. But because it is plastic, when you have something that's in close proximity with it, when it's on, it starts to overheat and starts to melt. Once it melts and deforms, every time you turn it on, it's now closer to that LED and it's going to continue to smoke and melt. All right, so even though this is functional, if I leave it on for, you know, for long enough, it's going to start smoking again with nothing in its way. And that's because that's the actual lens that's now kind of closer to the LED. That's the other thing, too, is the depth of how close the lens is to the LED. So they have a very powerful battery source, a very powerful LED. 
very close to a plastic lens. So when you're just openly using the light, it doesn't seem to be a problem whatsoever. So if you have a, a Warrior Mini and you never put it in your pocket, this is not an issue. But the biggest thing that people point out, and I have to say I did drop the ball with not mentioning this in the first video, so that is a uh, legitimate criticism, uh, is that this light does have a lockout mode, okay? Now, lockout mode basically means you could set the flashlight to not turn on when you push its buttons quickly. So if it gets bumped, it does not accidentally turn on. Now, if you hold the side button, all right, you can see we have our moonlight mode, right? But if you hold it past the moonlight, keep holding it, it shuts off. That is the lockout mode. So now with a quick press of the buttons, it does not turn on. So with that being said, if you want to carry a Warrior Mini and you do not want the chance of it accidentally burning your pocket or your leg, you can simply lock it out. To unlock it, it's the reverse. You push and hold this until it turns on. All right, and then now that it's on low, you can use the back button or you know change its different uh, light modes. Now, it seems simple enough, but it's not simple. All right, and you could argue that fact that is totally personal opinion. I've had multiple lights over the years, dozens of lights with different lockout functions. Generally speaking, the lockout function is put on much brighter flashlights to possibly prevent them from turning on when they're in a bag or maybe long-term storage. And that's how I believe those functions were designed for. Being in a bag, right, where multiple items could accidentally turn it on, as well as long-term storage, okay? Particularly if you have kids around, you don't want kids to accidentally turn it on, not so much for a safety aspect, but so the battery doesn't drain. Or if you're hiking or something and you want your flashlight in an emergency, you don't want it to be accidentally on down inside the backpack, or whatever, and then uh, you know you go to use it and the battery's dead. That's how I feel that lockout uh, function on flashlights, that's what it was intended for. In this particular light, I believe some people were giving feedback that they were telling Olight about this problem. They said, well, you know, that flashlight has a lockout mode. You know, if you don't want it to turn on your pocket, just lock it out. And yes, that is a somewhat simple solution, okay? So it's not like you gotta, you know, sell your Warrior Mini, it's gonna blow up and all that stuff. That's the other thing too, is people are talking about them exploding. That's a whole separate issue, which I'll, I'll bring up in a second here. Um, but it's not really dangerous if you do that. I don't think it's very common to lock out your flashlight when you carry it for EDC. When you just have it clipped to your pocket or inside your pocket or whatever, I don't think that's a very common thing. All right, first of all, it is rare that your light would go off in your pocket accidentally. However, there's plenty of people that it happened to. Not only this light, but all kinds of lights. And, and some that are less powerful, you know, they go take it out and they, it's dead. And they, well, why is, oh, it must have turned on in the pocket, you know? So it does happen enough to justify, you know, uh, the idea that, okay, maybe you have to use the lockout mode. I don't think it's something that you should have to use. I don't use lockout mode when I EDC a flashlight. I have used lockout mode, like for my bob bags and stuff, I have flashlights. I have used a lockout mode for those situations because I want to preserve that battery just in case it gets bumped, you know? So is it the end of the world to have to take out your light out of your pocket, do a long hold, okay, to unlock it, and then, um, you know, turn it on? No, but now you have to do the long hold again to lock it. If that's something that you want to practice and do, that's awesome. But what happens the one time you forget? The one time you forget, or in most cases, because you're not used to locking out your flash, or at least I'm not, you go take it out of your pocket and you go turn it on. It doesn't work. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do a long haul. I gotta lock it and lock it. That seems inconvenient. Is it the worst thing in the world? No. It's not gonna take you 10 minutes to do this. But the convenience of a flashlight is taking it out of your pocket and just turning it on. You know, I don't know anyone who wants to go through that process of locking and unlocking their flashlight every single time. And again, if you want to do that, that's cool. But that one time that you forget, guess what's going to happen? It's going to burn your leg or it's going to burn through your pants. If you want to take that chance, that's totally cool. I talked to people who said, yeah, I have a Warrior Mini. Yeah, it, you know, it gets hot or whatever. I just be careful. <laughs> you know, that's their solution. So you have, a, you have a couple options here. You could stop carrying this all together and, and completely write off Olight as a brand and think that they're total junk. That's your prerogative if you want to do that. Um, you could uh, continue to, if you happen to own this light already, continue to carry it and just say, okay, well, hopefully it doesn't turn on in my pocket on accident, I'll be careful. You could continue to carry it and lock it out every single time you put it in your pocket and unlock it every time you want to take it out and use it. Again, not the end of the world, but certainly not something I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know, continue to use the light, but I'm just not going to carry it in my pocket. I'm just not gonna keep this as an EDC option. 
Yes, I can lock it out. No, I don't want to. I find that to be inconvenient. And again, for me, I just know it's something I'm not used to. And I don't want to start training or practicing to carry a light like that because there's lots of other flashlights I carry that don't have lockout functions. So it's not something that I want to integrate into my carry system. Um, so simply put, this particular model, the Warrior Mini, uh, happens to overheat if it accidentally turns on in your pocket or bag or something. So I'm just not going to carry it in pocket or bag. I'm not going to alter how I carry it. I'm just going to leave it out. This will be a, a desk light. If I need something, you know, drop something on my desk, I can turn it on. I can go around the house or whatever. It's not a huge deal. It's not a big deal. Uh, so that's how I'm reacting to the situation. Uh, I still very much like Olights, <laughs> like I like other brands. This doesn't turn me off to the brand. I told you guys, like, as far as through night, um, some people have bad experience with through night, some people have bad experience with Streamlight and 4.7s and Nightcore. I mean, the list goes on and on. Just because you have a bad experience with something or just because something didn't work for you, it doesn't mean the brand's junk. That goes for anything, knives, guns, flashlights, whatever. That is just an issue with, for how I see it, it's an issue with this. This particular light, when someone says, hey, I have a Warrior Mini, um, should I EDC that? I would say, no, I don't think you should EDC it. I think that you should just uh, EDC something else because these happen to get very hot due to their design. Period, end of story. Uh, I'll give you another example. I have a, that I directly tested after watching the first videos, I took a, uh, a Seeker 2. Now this is pumping out 1500 lumens with a single LED. The Seeker 2 has three LEDs pumping out, I believe 3200 lumens. All right, so it's more than twice the power of this. Same thing, I wrapped the denim around it. All right, it started to smoke after like three minutes. Three minutes, so that light gets hot. It doesn't get as hot as fast. There's something wrong with this. So for the people who are saying, well, you know, you're kind of dumb, Jeff, because, you know, this is a powerful flashlight. Powerful la flashlights get hot. Yeah, well, I've never had one burn through my pocket, including this one, because it hasn't turned on an accident in my pocket. So I want to touch upon the rumor that these lights explode, okay? There was a news story, and I believe it was 2019, where some guy had a, uh, a no light, and it exploded, and he ended up dying from it, okay? Now, here is the details of that story, which is very important. He had the Olight. Now, some, if you look at the, the story, or just Google it or whatever, some of the stories, uh, or some of the news outlets mentioned specifically there was an Olight because apparently there's now a lawsuit against Olight for a faulty battery. Um, some of them, the stories don't even mention the brand. They just talk about, you know, the thing exploding and killing him. So what happened was he was working on his car, and he put his flashlight in his mouth. Okay, now... Flashlights are not intended to go in your mouth. I don't know if any specific flashlight that's actually meant to be in your mouth. I've seen mouthpieces where it's like a rubber piece that attaches to a flashlight and then, you know, sticks off the back that you can grip onto with your teeth. That's a whole separate thing. But generally speaking, you're not supposed to put a flashlight in your mouth and none of them are designed to go in your mouth, okay? Particularly ones with very powerful lithium batteries. I don't recommend it. However, I've done it. You've probably done it. You need a hands-free light. They make plenty of hands-free lights. This has a, a two-way clip, so you can clip this onto your hat, all right, so it could be hands-free. But in the moment, most of us have done that, okay? Just real quick, just that's it. Just put it between your lips for a second, you know, use both your hands, okay, you're done. It's not like you make a whole day out of it, um, but it's just, it's a common thing that people happen to do, you just go hands-free for a second. So he had done that, and I don't know what model it was. Now here's an aside, is that a lot of the Olight models, as we know, have magnetic tail caps. So if he was working on his car, and it was a model with a magnetic tail cap. I don't know why he put it in his mouth. He could have stuck it to the hood or, or the side panel. Anything that was metal, it would have stuck to because it's magnetic, right? Anyway, apparently, and this is mentioned in some stories and not others, but apparently um, he made contact with the car battery, okay? Maybe he completed the circuit and whatever the reason was, whether he did make contact or didn't, uh, the battery inside exploded. Okay, and exploded in his mouth, which obviously caused uh, severe damage, and then he later died in the hospital. So that's a one very specific scenario. Uh, I feel like if the, if the flashlight did make contact with maybe the battery terminal and, and who knows, maybe shorted it out or whatever and, and threw all the energy at the lithium, which would have made it explode, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's, I could see that happening. Uh, that's extremely rare. I guess I would say don't put your flashlight in your mouth when you're working on your car. Now, if the battery on the car had nothing to do with the story and he just was using it in his mouth and it just happened to short or whatever whatever it was and it exploded in his mouth, that's still not a very good situation. So at this point, I would just suggest don't put high-powered flashlights in your mouth. You would think that's common sense, right? But, you know, things happen. Things happen in life. 
Um, so, you know, going back to, to this scenario, no, it's not a good scenario, and I think it's not a good design. I saw that Olight on their website anyway. They're still selling them on Amazon, but on their website, they were, you know, sold out for all of them. So I'm assuming there's enough complaints where maybe they're going to change the design or just drop it completely. I don't really know. Um, but there's plenty of people who are complaining about this, all right? Now, yes, other flashlights, including, you know, different brands or different models of Olight, they are powerful. They do get hot. You have to use some common sense. If you have a really powerful flashlight and you hold your hand here and you go, ah, oh, that burns. I mean, no flashlight should really, you know, harm their user. I think technically you should be able to hold on, but, you know, I get it. We're making them more and more brighter, and the only way to do that is more and more energy. All right, so there's not... There's not a great way to solve that except for making the cases much bigger, better heat sinks and stuff. But, you know, form factor is everything, too. You want a powerful flashlight, but you don't want to, you know, carry around a, a massive, like, you know, dumbbell, okay, for a flashlight. So making them as small as possible, that's what they did here. They put a, a ton of energy, uh, very awesome uh, LED and stuff. It's just, again, if it was a little bit deeper, if the, the uh, lens was glass, this might not be an issue whatsoever. But because of this specific setup... They do get extra hot, a little bit more than, you know, other powerful flashlights, and it's just something to be aware of. Either don't carry it in your pocket, or get used to using that lockout mode, okay? But I did catch a lot of crap in the comments, like, you're so dumb, you don't even know how to use it, just use the lockout mode, no problem. Yeah, well, I don't want to use the lockout mode, okay? That's, uh, that's strange to me, to have to turn that on and off every time. If the lockout mode is like a switch on the body, a physical mechanical switch or something, all right, fine, I'll do that, that's not a big deal. But it's not like I don't remember how to do it, and it's not like it takes forever. It's very simple. Let me turn on, goes on, still hold it. It's all, okay, so it's locked out. I want to turn it back on, hold it down. It's not a big deal, but the scenario that I'm, I'm thinking is that, okay, well, it's locked out, and I'm walking around, whatever. Oh, I need my flashlight. I take it out of the pocket, and I do this. I go turn it on, but nothing happens because it's locked out. So I'm trying to avoid those scenarios where it's like, oh, crap, you know, and then I go, oh, okay, fine. And then I, I do that whole process, but the one time I'm done with my flashlight, and because I'm not, you know, always thinking about specifically I have to lock my flashlight out. I put it in the pocket and I forget about it. And let's just say it accidentally turns on it. Okay, well, now I'm back to square one where, you know, I got a burnt leg or ruined pants or something. So I don't want to deal with it. It's not a huge deal, but I personally don't want to deal with that. So I'm just not going to EDC this particular light. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but just understand, too, my... my uh, frame of mind. So when I did my testing, I'm like, oh, let me just try this. And I wasn't expecting anything. And I put it on there and I turn it on and it's like starting to smoke already. I'm like, wow, I'm, I was actually kind of shocked by this. You know, so I wanted to post that information right away. I wanted to save people's legs. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to help you out. That's why I posted the information. All right, so don't kill the messenger. You know, I didn't, I didn't create this particular design. I have nothing to do with Olight. That's something else too, which maybe I'll get into in another video in the future. But someone's like, oh, well, I guess you're not going to collect your royalties check from Olight now because you're talking crap about them. I don't get a royalties check from Olight, okay? Olight doesn't pay me to make videos. So, you know, people assume all kinds of stuff uh, with, uh, with YouTube reviewers. And you know what? Some of that's true for some people. It's not true for everyone. So please do not assume that kind of stuff. Again, I'll go into some details in the future. But, you know, what I do here on YouTube is I share my experiences. I'm not sponsored by anyone. All right, uh, I don't work for any of these companies. I just share my experiences for my hobbies. I happen to like guns and I like knives and I like flashlights and I like gear and camping and outdoor stuff and survival and I like all kinds of crap. So when I want to make a video on something like that, it's because I want to make a video on it. It's not because someone told me to. It's not because they're, they're paying me to do it. It's just, uh, you know, I'm just sharing what I do already on camera. All right, so, I mean, you know, it's a little annoying when you hear stuff like that because people are making the wrong assumptions. It's just not true. So, anyway, oh, man, it's just, it's kind of funny because some people take this stuff, like, so seriously. Uh, people get very defensive, like, you know, and, and try to justify their stuff. Like, I'm sure there's people out there who have tons of Olights and, you know, so, and, and, like, in my video, I basically said, hey, here's a problem with this Olight. And they're like, shut up, shut up, I love Olight, they're perfect. No company's perfect, okay? And then you get the people on the other side of the, the spectrum, like, just get a Surefire. And then you get the people who go, yeah, it's total junk. I'm never buying Olight again. And, and everything in between, you know what I'm saying? So people, people have their opinions, and it's totally fine. You're allowed to have your opinion. Personally, this, this doesn't change my uh, opinion on Olight as a whole. I, what I see happen here is they made one particular light that's just not good because it's unsafe. They need to redesign it or scrap it. It's that simple. It's not a big deal. Anyway, this whole thing, you know, getting gear and using it and stuff is supposed to be fun. I don't think it's so serious. 
Uh, but when something is dangerous, it is uh, important to know that. All right. And then, like I said, do what you want with that information. So that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.